What is the difference between 70% isopropyl alcohol and 91%? This is a question I get asked a lot. So to supply that demand, here's the answer. There are two primary ways in which these are different. Let's look at number one. Number one is the level of alcohol concentration in the bottle, meaning how much of this liquid is actually alcohol and how much is water. 70% means that it contains 70% alcohol and 30% water. 91% means it contains 91% alcohol and 9% water. Now what is the reasoning behind this? Why make one 70%? Why make another 91%? Well, 70% works better as a disinfectant and an antiseptic than the 91%. The reason why is that there's a lot more water in here, so it evaporates way slower, allowing it to dwell longer on a surface. Because to disinfect properly, it has to have time to dwell and remain wet on a surface to give it time to kill the bacteria and the viruses. 91% alcohol dries way, way faster, so it's not near as good for disinfecting because it doesn't have enough time to actually kill the viruses and bacteria because it dries and evaporates too fast. Now, real quick, you might ask, what's the difference between disinfectant and antiseptic? Simple. Antiseptics are applied to the body. Disinfectants are applied to non-living surfaces, like countertops, handrails, etc. Think of an operating room. A surgeon will apply an antiseptic to the body and he will use a disinfectant on the operating table. The second way that they are different are their practical uses, basically how they're used in everyday life. We already kind of touched how the 70% is more used for disinfecting and antiseptic, right? Killing germs and viruses and bacteria on, on surfaces and, you know, using this to apply to your skin before an injection or some kind of medical procedure. The slower evaporation is less likely to irritate your skin, whereas if you were to use 91% isopropyl alcohol, on your skin then because it evaporates so fast it's more likely to irritate it and dry the skin out. Which would leave us with the question, well then what is 91% isopropyl alcohol used for? It's more used for cleaning where you need something to dry faster with minimal residue left behind. A few examples, think of medical equipment. Think of stethoscopes, right? You go to a doctor he puts the thing in his ears, he's got the little round piece, puts it on your chest and on your back to hear your breathing, right? Well, you know, doctors want to get patients in and out, right? One after the other. And so they can get the stethoscopes and, and they can put it on the patient, clean it, disinfect it afterwards, see another patient, clean it, disinfect it over afterwards real fast, minimal residue, right? See one patient after the other after the other. Now, whether doctors do that in practice, I have no idea, but that's the concept. You can clean it real fast, um, minimal residue, kill germs and bacteria, viruses, boom, boom, boom. Another example, think of jewelry, right? You can get your costly, expensive jewelry, you can clean it, you can degrease it, but it's gonna dry really fast, so it's not gonna leave behind water spots and streaks on your jewelry. Another example, think of a manufacturing or a laboratory setting. You got very precise little parts and equipment like tweezers or something, okay? Got a pair of tweezers here. The 91% will ensure that the surface is dry, residue free, so you might take your little tweezers or little tool and apply the itty bitty little microchip or the little lenses or whatever, right? So your little tweezers or your little equipment that you're using is clean, dry, residue free, and the little surface that you're applying the microchip or the lenses or whatever you're doing is clean, dry, and residue free. That is what 90% isopropyl alcohol is used for. And there's many other applications. Those are just a few examples. So that's the difference between the two. Thanks so much for checking out the video. If you like this, you found it interesting, you'll probably find this video playlist series right here interesting. This is an ongoing series I have. It's called Understanding Cleaning Chemicals. Click right here and I'll see you in the next video.